Mr. Speaker, uh, I yield myself such time as I may consume. Gentleman's recognized. Mr. Speaker, uh, federal regulations for the management of federal property currently prohibit an agency from disposing of functional or repairable firearms by selling them. Under these regulations, when an agency no longer has a need for a firearm, it can transfer it to another law enforcement entity or destroy it. This regulation has served the important goal of ensuring that federally owned firearms do not fall into the wrong hands. But it also misses an opportunity to save money by selling an unneeded firearm to the law enforcement officer who has been using it. Last Congress, our colleague and former Orlando Police Chief Congressman, Congresswoman Val Demings recognized the opportunity for improvement in these, in these regulations. She introduced the original version of this legislation, which allows a federal agency to sell a retired handgun to the law enforcement officer who has been using it, transferring it from a service weapon to a weapon in the hands of a responsible gun owner who is trained to use it. Congresswoman Deming's legislation included two improvements that unfortunately have been removed from the current version of the bill. Her version required the law enforcement officer who is purchasing the gun to undergo a background check. This is a common sense requirement given that an officer won't undergo a standard background check to purchase the we weapon for many other sellers. And most background checks are practically instantaneous, often about 30 seconds. I do not think that 30 seconds is too long to wait to ensure that a gun does not fall into the wrong hands. Well, I think it's notable that the majority stripped this reasonable and effortless requirement, the current version of the bill does require a purchasing officer to be in good standing. While this is not as thorough as Congresswoman Deming's legislation, the good standing requirement should prevent unlawful transfers in most cases. Ms. Deming's bill also included the sense of Congress that the funds received by the government from selling a retired service weapon should be used to support evidence-based gun violence prevention or gun safety education and training programs. Again, this is a thoughtful provision that would have directed these funds toward a critical need in our communities and would have improved public safety. This provision should be totally non-controversial, but our Republican colleagues have stripped it from the bill. The only logical conclusion is that they do not want a single additional dollar to go to gun violence prevention, even as it continues to tear our communities apart and imperil the lives of law enforcement officers. While I wish the majority left Congresswoman Deming's bill intact, I nonetheless support this weakened version of her work. But I want to make it very clear that if any of the Republican poison pill amendments pass, I will have to encourage my colleagues to vote no. The base text of this bill allows limited transfers of handguns to active federal law enforcement officers in good standing for a fair market value. The amendments subvert this purpose by allowing those who are not active law enforcement to purchase a weapon without a background check, allowing the government to sell military-style assault weapons without a background check, and forcing taxpayers to subsidize these gun sales by selling them below their fair market value. I strongly urge all members to oppose these amendments. I want to note, however, that I support Ms. Jacobs' very helpful amendment to further define the good standing requirement and help ensure that retired weapons are only transferred to those who can be trusted to, uh, with them. This bill had bipartisan support in committee, so it's unfortunate that the majority would rather politicize Police Week with a radical gun agenda than pass a reasonable bipartisan bill. If the poison pill amendments fail, I will continue to support the bill. But if any of them pass, I must urge my colleagues to oppose this legislation. With that, I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman from New York.